Today's ID4 video is part one of a range test and charging test. For today, we are going to be taking the ID4 on the highway at 100% state of charge and driving it down below 5% to see just how far this electric SUV can go at highway speeds. I'd like to note that no HVAC was used during this test and the temperature today was between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. My goal is to drive the car at a steady 75 miles an hour the entire trip. The next video, part two, we'll be covering the real world charging curve of the ID4, so be sure to subscribe for that content. The car is at a 100% state of charge, as you can see. It's estimating over here on the digital gauge cluster that we are going to get 235 miles of range. Now this can change depending upon your previous driving behavior. We drove over here on a highway and so that might be impacting this number. We'll obviously see what it is when we get back. So we're gonna be getting on that highway right there. It is cloudy today. There is a little bit of off and on wind. I used the app called Windy and it's saying that eight to 10 miles an hour of an initial tailwind. So it's coming from the south and going north. And then of course, as we come back from the north coming south, we will hit a headwind. And the point of this test is to really just figure out what can you expect to get going 75 miles an hour on the highway with a little bit of wind here and there and with generally speaking no crazy temperature or anything like that so we're really trying to go with a sort of quote unquote average day highway speeds can this car get close to the 250 miles of range that it's quoted at we're going to find out we're about halfway through let's call it of this trip 106 miles in going approximately 72 miles an hour on average now the goal was to try to stay at 75 miles an hour with the adapter cruise control we did run into a little bit of traffic in one of the towns so that cut this number down a bit when i pulled into this little spot where we're sitting at currently it was actually at 73 miles on average and then as soon as i pushed the parking brake button it went back down to 72 miles an hour so Either way, over 70 miles an hour right now. We'll see if we can get that back up to 75 on the way back. And here we are one hour and a half in, 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which I think is a little bit high because we got a small amount of tailwind. Again, right now the winds are around eight to 10 miles per hour. And so on the way back, we're gonna face that of course, and that should lower that number. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be closer to three miles per kilowatt hour. I'm gonna say if we can hit three miles per kilowatt hour for the whole trip with the headwind on the way back, that's gonna be pretty solid for highway speeds going roughly 75 miles an hour. And then just looking over here at the digital display cluster, we can now see that this shows 141 miles of range. So if you add these two together, it's expecting us to get somewhere around 247 miles total of range, which is what the car is rated at EPA wise. That would be pretty incredible going highway speeds. Okay, friends, before we move on, that probably felt like just minutes to you. However, it took about three or so hours for me today. So if you appreciate the effort, I'd appreciate a like down below. Thank you so much. We can start off here by talking about our state of charge, which is 4%. So keep that in mind. Um, you can see that we did 220 miles exactly. 68 miles an hour on average now i did run into some traffic and there was some construction things like that i can tell you i had the car on adaptive cruise control almost the entire time and when it was on adaptive cruise control it was going 75 miles an hour flat so it does say it's a little slower than that here but i can tell you in the wind on the highway it was definitely going 75. regardless you can see that it took about three hours and 20 minutes or so to do round trip and we have 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour which is actually slightly above the prediction i made halfway of three kilowatt or three miles per kilowatt hour so i think that's actually pretty solid to be honest with you and if you look over here at the digital gauge cluster you can see that it's estimating we have eight miles left at four percent so it's saying two miles per percent that'd be about 200 miles of range uh, we're doing a little bit better and i will tell you that this up until the very bottom of the range of percentages is extremely accurate so it doesn't drop from say 25 percent to 15 percent very quickly it'll slowly drop very uniformly as it goes down the state of charge however the last five percent it seemed to last 
kind of forever. It set at 5% for more than a few miles, more than you thought it would. So I think as it gets lower, it starts looking into that extra capacity that VW may be hiding from you normally and sort of trying to get you to stop and charge versus keep going to the absolute zero limit. And there was no way I wanted to take the car today to zero. That's, that's not how these cars are meant to be driven. That's not how the average consumer is going to drive these cars. And that was not my intent today. So overall, if you look at the 4% remaining battery we have, um, you know, we're talking roughly another 10 miles or so. Uh, at 70, you know, let's just even call it 70 miles an hour, 230 miles of range, in my opinion. There was a little headwind on the way back, a little tailwind on the way there, a little rain here and there in between, nothing too crazy. In my opinion, 230 miles is my money's worth for the ID4, and I would give this an A+. Let's see how fast this thing charges when it's at a very low state of charge. Part two is looking at the real world charge curve of the ID4. Does it charge as fast as advertised? How fast is that exactly? And how much energy does it take to go from 4% to 80%? Is there a ton of range degradation after 12,000 miles of ownership? Find out by subscribing for part two.